Hey folks, how you doing? Always good to be back. And it's great to be back with a new finds video for, for the first time in a couple of months. <laughs> um, as you can see in the title of this video, it was a happy return to vinyl digging and that part was great. And then things suddenly took a bizarre, crazy twist <laughs> at the end of the night or the end of the day. Uh, so, but we'll start with the positive first. Uh, I'll show the records in a bit. I just want to get the story out there. Okay, it, this weekend, uh, a couple of vinyl stores in the Sacramento area opened for the first time in a couple of months. Uh, they've been closed since March, since the whole uh, coronavirus pandemic took place and everybody was on lockdown. Uh, this was the first weekend open, and two vinyl stores in the downtown Sacramento area opened f for the first time in a couple of months. Opened with restrictions. Um, both stores, they only allowed four customers in the store at one time, and these are not big stores. These are independently owned record stores, very small uh, retail space. Uh, so they were only allowing four people in the store at once. And there was a line that was forming outside. I was in that line. You, know, you wait for one person to pay for their, their records and come out. One person can come in. So no big deal. I waited maybe 10, 15 minutes before I could actually get in the store and start looking at records. It was mandatory. You had to wear a face mask. I had my mask on. Um, you had to use hand sanitizers, which they provided. So you had to sanitize your hands before entering the store, and I had no problem with that. So I, they were providing the sanitizer. I did that. You can request gloves if you wanted to. They would provide it. Uh, so I said, why not? I'll really make this safe. So I requested rubber gloves while digging, and I put them on. And now I can dig with my face mask, my gloves, my hands clean. I can browse and hunt for records, which was a lot of fun to do. This this was the routine at both record stores that opened uh, this weekend. Um, and the day we're talking about, I visited these record stores Saturday, May 30th, in the afternoon in downtown Sacramento. And I'm telling you, it felt great to, to dig for records again, because I haven't been vinyl digging since February. February was the last time I actually went vinyl digging. It felt great to do this again and, and browse through the records and that really felt good. It's like, okay, we're slowly getting back to normal now. It's not quite the way it used to be, but it's better than being locked up at home. So it felt good. It felt good to do this. And it was good to see the stone, uh, these owners of these stores again, because I haven't seen them in months. Really nice. These stores are owned by really nice people, and they were just happy to be open. <laughs> and everybody's getting back to what they used to do, talking music and talking records and artists they like and what they've experienced the last couple of months. So you hear the customers chattering about music and it was nice. It was really nice. It felt like regular life again. It was quite nice. I got myself some good records, went back to the old part of, of town called Old Sacramento where all the historic old buildings are and the railroad museum is. I ended up there because I'm into photography. I was going to take pictures of Old Sacramento because it was a beautiful day. And um, the uh, restaurant that I like to eat at was open, and you can dine in. You can actually sit in there and eat. It's a sports bar, though. Uh, but they 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 uh, they make sandwiches and burgers, and so I got myself a couple of beers, big cheeseburger and fries, and oh, it was so good. And I was sitting there thinking, this is nice. This is the way life felt before all this Corona stuff happened. This feels good. I've just I went to two vinyl stores, dug for records, now I'm here drinking a couple of beers, eating this this delicious hamburger and fries in a nice environment. This is nice. This is nice. I like this. I like this. This this is the way life was before all this chaos happened. I'm digging this. And I started taking my pictures around the old part of Sacramento. I was going to hang around because the sun was starting to set. I decided, okay, when the sun sets, I can take some night photography. That would be fun because I used to do that. <laughs> um, now the whole time I'm in Old Sacramento I noticed there's choppers, helicopters circling above and I know there was some protests the day before but that was at the state capitol. Um, I'm reasonably far from that area 
But I noticed a, another chopper was starting to circle like, uh-oh. Suddenly th it doesn't feel right. Um, now where I park my car is uh, Old Sacramento. There's Old Sacramento and the interstate divides Old Sacramento from downtown Sacramento. And under the freeway there is a parking garage. That's where I parked my car. It's an open air parking garage. And where I parked my car overlooks the on-ramp coming off the freeway, the exit to get on J Street, downtown Sacramento. Uh, the police had closed the, the off-ramp, and they closed the exit after that, the, the other off-ramp after that. They closed that, and, I, and for where I was parked, where I parked my car, I had a perfect view of the off-ramp. And that's where the cops were parking their cars one by one, all along the off-ramp. I could see like dozens of police cars, probably only 40 feet away from me because uh, from the area where I parked my car, I had a perfect view of this. <laughs> so I saw all these police cars going out there. Now granted, it's like 7.30 in the evening now. The sun's setting. It's going to be dark probably another half hour or so. And I see all the cops parked on this off-ramp. And uh, they got the red and blues flashing. And they all get out and they're getting into their riot gear. They're, get, they're putting on their helmets, their vests, the face shields. They're getting their batons ready. Uh, some of them are going through their guns. They have, which, which shoots non-lethal bullets, rubber bullets. They kind of look like paintball guns in a way. They were getting those kind of loaded and ready. I saw some of them handling canisters, which I'm not an expert on these things, but I'm guessing, okay, that's tear gas. <laughs> they are getting basically cocked and ready <laughs> to, to do their jobs. They didn't look like they were hyped up like they were ready to beat someone's ass or anything. They just looked like, okay, this is what we need to do, and they're just trying to get themselves organized and ready. So they were getting suited up on this on-ramp, this off-ramp. And I'm just sitting there watching like, oh, shit. And I counted about a good... 30 officers coming out of these cars on the off-ramp and at the beginning at, I mean at the very end of the on-ramp of uh, the exit ramp there was a riot patrolmen who were already geared up and just sort of waiting for their friends to come down and there must have been about 40 of those guys there and that's just on that exit and I'm, I'm sure it's the same thing on the next exit down I'm thinking oh god it's gonna go down it's going to go down. Because <laughs> uh, I've been in Old Sacramento this whole time. I didn't see what was unfolding just two blocks away in the downtown area. And sure enough, I kind of took a walk. Instead of going to my car, I kind of took a walk where all these cops in riot gear were standing around just to take a peek at what's going on. I looked down the street. Now they have. Now we're looking down J Street in downtown Sacramento, and the cops have closed the next four blocks going down the road. And that's the road I need to take to get the freeway. <laughs> I'm sure there's other ways, but that's the way, that's the way I know the best to get back home. Uh, I live an hour away from Sacramento. Um, but the street was still open. It's just you couldn't turn left to go to I Street, which was the next block over, because that's where all the federal buildings and uh, county jail and stuff like that is. And that's where a lot of the protests had started that evening. So I got, I, I'm, I'm, first I was like, well, so much for night photography because it looks like it's about to go down and I'm too old to be caught in the middle of this shit. <laughs> so I, I, I'll be home in 45 to 50 minutes if I go right now. <laughs> so I think, it's, I think I should go right now. The way things are looking, the way things are escalating, you felt this vibe of, it, it, you know, Downtown Sacramento now is a ticking time bomb about to go off and shit's about to pop off and I need to get my ass out of there because I'm not in my 20s were only because the people that were protesting they were young they were, they were late teens 20s maybe early 30s I didn't see anyone my age holding a sign saying fuck the police and I didn't see any of that <laughs> So I didn't want to get in the middle of it. My, I had friends online because I was telling people online what I was seeing. And a lot of them said, if you got your camera, take some cool pictures. And I'm just thinking like, nah, <laughs> I'm not into this kind of photography. Uh, though it would have been interesting, but I just, I was like, no, nah, I'd rather be safe <laughs> than put myself in the middle of that chaos. So that's how my end, my night ended 
of, of returning to vinyl digging. It took this bizarre turn, and I was caught up in a protest riot, uh, just like we're seeing all throughout the nation. Um, and there was, <laughs> so I'm going down the street, I get in my car, I'm going down J Street to get to the freeway. There's cops and riot patrol everywhere. There's news crews of local news stations everywhere. I see cameramen running down the street because uh, I, I have the green light. I'm getting ready to go, and I have to stop because everybody's running in the cr in the intersection. Protesters are running. Cameramen are running after them, <laughs> and they're all going uh, towards I Street, the the opposite way. And I just happen to look down towards I Street, and I see. A massive, I mean a massive group of people protesting you know, because the federal building's there, the courthouse is there, you know, the county jail, I, th I believe, is there. I saw thousands of people in, in the intersection of block down with the signs and riot and I could hear them yelling. I can't understand what they're saying, but I could hear people yelling and chanting. And there was thousands of them. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, those people weren't there just a couple hours ago. Uh, it escalated that quickly, and I just looked down there like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I've only traveled maybe two blocks from the parking garage where my car was. I've only traveled two blocks and saw all this, uh, the next uh, intersection over. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and I just kept seeing more riot police and more riot police everywhere. I mean, every everything grew. The, pro the size of the protesters grew quickly uh, the amount of riot policemen that grew quickly too there was tons of them out there it was crazy I mean it was crazy nothing happened to me uh, I mean it's still 730 the sun is setting it's not night yet but it's getting there and it'll be dark at this point I'm sure it would have been dark by another 15 20 minutes and I had a feeling like as soon as the sun goes down and it gets dark out here shit's gonna go crazy because <laughs> you can just feel it and sure enough, I, I continued down J Street. I finally, this was like four or five blocks of chaos, city blocks of chaos. I finally came out of it, uh, the other end of J Street, where things were somewhat normal, <laughs> and got on the freeway and just got my ass home. Um, by about almost an hour later, I'm home. I quickly turn on the TV, and then I see the news. The neighborhoods that I was just in, an hour ago to get home were now consumed by riot police and protesters all and now they're and now the protesters are looting they're breaking into businesses smashing in windows destroying property graffitiing every building they see with you know um, Black Lives Matter and um, ACA ACAB I can't breathe, all these messages, you know, fuck the police, all that shit is being, being graffitied on pretty much every building you see in a four block radius. It was crazy. Um, and small businesses got looted and broken into. One of the vinyl stores I shopped at earlier that day is in that neighborhood. I hope they didn't destroy that business because that guy is barely hanging on by a shoestring to keep his store open and he's a nice guy. I prayed no one broke into his store. I'm sh I hope he's okay, <laughs> and his store's okay. But yeah, the neighborhood I was just shopping in just hours ago was Riot Central, and I saw in the news. And this morning I turned on the news. I saw all the destruction of neighborhoods I was standing in <laughs> the day before. Like wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. I'm sorry to go on this long rant, but that's that was my vinyl digging experience. Okay, now I'm going to show records. Besides that terrible experience, I did manage to score some records which now seem kind of petty and meaningless, <laughs> but I did score some nice stuff on my little return to record hunting and I got this Japanese pressing of Van Halen's 1984 with the OB strip. This looked so cool. I could not wait to score this. Um, this is one of my favorite Van Halen albums. Um, I think I was in the eighth grade when this album was actually brand new, and my brother, who plays guitar, was really into Eddie Van Halen back then, and he had bought this cassette, and every time I went driving with him, he would just crank the living hell out of this cassette, 1984. So I knew the album really well, 
It's on the uh, Warner Brothers label. And I love the Japanese pressings because, number one, the vinyl always sounds so good. And they always come with these cool inserts um, where the lyrics are printed in Japanese and in English. It's just a cool thing to have. And I love collecting uh, these Japanese pressings of some of my favorite albums. This is definitely one of my favorite albums <laughs> uh, from back in the day when I was still going to junior high school. I love this album and it was so cool to find this Japanese pressing of it. So what a great day. What a great day to score this. It was, it was fantastic. I love the drum sound on this album. Whoever mic'd and mixed Alex Van Halen's drums and created his drum sound did a great job because the drum sounds so good so thick and powerful on this album. Um, love the drum sound on it. So that was a cool find. Something pretty rare from Michael Jackson. This is called Michael Jackson, Who's Bad. And this is a collection of audio performances he did on award shows. Like, we have two songs from the Grammy Awards show he did in 1988. And a medley of songs he did on the MTV Awards in 1995. His entire Super Bowl performance back in 1993 so um yeah it's it's a real cool thing to have the audio is actually not bad you do have to turn it up a bit to get some volume out of it but i just thought that was cool to have a audio collection of, of the songs he did on award shows the grammys and mtv awards and such so all his 80s and 90s hits are on here and it's a it's a good collection. I don't think it's something I'll listen to quite a bit. I won't listen to it that much, but but it is fun to have. I do like to collect his records, especially the from the eighties and nineties. It's a it's a cool little addition to the Michael Jackson vinyl collection I have going. And I did enjoy listening to this. Um, I mean, a lot of these performances he was lip syncing anyway, so it sounds just like the album. <laughs> it pretty much is because. This is when Michael Jackson was doing a lot of lip syncing and not actually singing live. But it's it's still cool to hear because I remember watching these on TV when it was being broadcast live. So it's nice to have it on a vinyl collection. So really cool. This I really like. This is from the Smithereens, their album Especially For You. This is a limited edition picture disc of the album. And it also comes out with this fold out poster. I have never seen this before. <laughs> I didn't know this existed. I saw this in the vinyl store and I tripped out. I was like, oh wow. Even the guy working in the vinyl store didn't realize this was on his shelf. <laughs> and I took it and I took it to the counter to get paid for it. He just looked like, oh, I didn't know we had that. Like he probably would have saved it for himself or something. Here's what the picture disc looks like. This is side B actually. And this is side A. Really nice. I love the way this looks. This is a cool picture disc. And I love the band The Smithereens. I love this album. This is a really good album from them. And some really great songs on here. Uh, Behind the Wall of Sleep, In a Lonely Place, Blood and Roses. Um, just, just a great album. And I was actually wrong. This is side two. This is side two. And this is side one. <laughs> Had it backwards. And, um, like I said, it does come out with a little fold-out poster. You know, the Smithereens weren't exactly the most photogenic band in the world, but <laughs> but here's a poster, a little skinny 12 by 24 poster. Pretty nice. A rare collectible. I Like I said, I love the Smithereens. I love collecting their vinyl. And uh, this looked like quite a, quite a collector's item, so I... I, of course, I jumped on it and bought it. Uh, the music on here, like I said, is rad. <laughs> I love the music on here, especially wall, uh, Behind the Wall of Sleep and Blood and Roses and uh, In a Lonely Place. Those are great songs. And they sound good. For a picture disc, this sounds pretty good. Um, of course, I have this the vinyl record of this, which sounds, the sound quality actually is better on the vinyl record. But as far as picture discs go, it's not bad as far as the sound quality. But it's just a cool collectible thing to have since I'm a, a big fan of the band. 
I'm really happy to put this in the Smithereens vinyl collection because it's, like I said, it's just a cool collectible. And it's one of my favorite albums of theirs, so this was a great find. Really great find. All right, up next. Yeah, can we get, get this out of here? There we go. Up next, uh, the B-52's High Fidelity. I, I'm pretty sure this is a reissue. <laughs> I still bought it used. I got it for a used price, which was not very expensive. Uh, nothing really that exciting on the back. I've only listened to side one of this record so far, as I only scored these records last night. <laughs> and then came home and watched the news <laughs> in amazement of what was unfolding in the area I was just in. This is also on the Warner Brothers label. Um, this is a fun album. I only listened to side one so far, but uh, that was enjoyable. <laughs> Boy, good lord, that was fun. Oh, man, I mean, Rock Lobster closes out side one. Uh, the album starts with Planet Claire. Uh, 52 Girls, uh, Dance This Mess Around. Those, that's a really strong side one. Uh, I've yet to dig into side two. But really loving what I've heard from them so f on this album so far. Um, I caught the B-52s in concert last summer when they toured with OMD and Berlin. That was a fun show. That was a fun show. And these guys were a gr are a great live band. They were so fun to watch. I had a great time at that concert. And um, still reliving it. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. B-52s. All right. And next up is Steely Dan, Countdown to Ecstasy. I haven't spun this record yet. Um, when I was doing Lockdown Jam videos, I uh, in one of the videos I showed the best of Steely Dan. And it made me realize I don't have much Ste uh, Steely Dan vinyl. I have Asia and the best of, and that's it. <laughs> that's all I have from Steely Dan I, and it made me think like I gotta start collecting more Steely Dan because I've always loved that band and I love their music and they have so many great hits and so many great songs you know, why am I not collecting them why are they not a big part of my collection so I am now on the road to uh, to building the Steely Dan vinyl collection and I mean the songs that I know off of this album is Showbiz Kids and My Old School those are the only songs that ring a bell. Uh, I've I've heard them before. It's been a long time since I've heard them, but I've heard them before. So I can't wait to get into this. Look at this ABC Records. Look at that old school uh, label. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm excited to listen to this. I'm very excited. And here's the lyric sheet. Um, nothing spectacular to look at there. But uh, yeah, uh, I couldn't get over how I had very little Steely Dan in my collection and I was like well that's something that has that needs to change right now and um, now now I'm start I'm on the road to uh, collecting more Steely Dan can't wait till I have pretty much everything they have so nice very nice all right the last 12 incher is a 12 inch single from Simple Minds love song I've never seen this on a 12 inch single before so of course I had to have it. Big fan of Simple Minds. Big fan of this song. It's one of their earlier songs. You know, before The Breakfast Club and before Once Upon a Time. <laughs> this is old school, old school uh, Simple Minds. And uh, it's on a custom label here, which I really like. There we go. Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. I hate when they put the price tag on the goddamn label. Uh, it's good. I'm gonna have to be very careful removing that or I'll probably just leave it. I might just leave it. But, oh, so happy to have uh, scored this. On the B side, we have the song, This Earth That You Walk Upon. Uh, listen to that song, too. Really good song there. So, very happy to have scored this. It's just a 12 inch single, sure, but I really love Simple Minds and. Uh, Really love this song, so I was really happy to score this 12 inch single. Uh, anything I could score from their earlier years that's a rare vinyl, I jump on it. All right, I'm gonna go through some seven inch singles, some 45s, very quickly. Um, from the Human League, uh, Mirror Man. This is a seven inch picture disc for the song Mirror Man. And on the B side, we have the song Gold. And um, 
I've never seen this before. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of picture discs, but I mean, I love the song Mirror Man. I do love the band Human League. And it's a, they're just cool collectibles to have. They're very cool collectibles. And that, that's why I wanted to score it. <laughs> it wasn't a must have or anything. It, I think it was like eight bucks. And I thought I could live with that. I could live with that. So I scored it. I'm glad I did. I, I love that song, Mirror Man. And uh, this is my favorite era of Human League. So um, that was a good score. Another cool single that I found was from Depeche Mode, Strange Love. Big 80s song. Um, I have, I gotta admit, I don't really see much 45s of Depeche Mode out there in the wild. I see plenty of their 12-inch singles, but it's very rare I could find a, a 45 from Depeche Mode. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough for something. I don't know, uh, but I've noticed that it's like I don't. It's, that's not something I see very often. So pretty happy to have scored this single. I did, I and I dig the song. From the Robert Cray Band, Acting This Way, 45, seven inch single. I've said it once, I'll say it again. You can never go wrong with the Robert Cray Band. Oh, uh, he's one of my favorite uh, blues artists. He is a damn good guitarist too. And it's on the Mercury label. So, very nice score there. Love me some Robert Trey. I wish I had seen him live, but uh, it's going to be a while before we get concerts again, so I won't get my chance for a while. Now, this I know I've never seen on a 45 is Kraftwerk. Uh, the single is The Telephone Call. I don't recall what the song is. I bought it because I never see 45s from Kraftwerk. <laughs> uh, so I thought that would be an interesting thing to add to the collection. Uh, like I said, very rare. That, and this is another band that I do like, and I don't collect their vinyl. It's Kraftwerk. I do like them. I just, for some reason, don't collect don't collect them. So maybe, maybe I got I got one one album from them. I think it's Autobahn. I'm not even sure. To tell you the truth, <laughs> uh, but it's on the um, Warner Brothers label. Like Steely Dan. This is another classic band that I know I like, and for some reason, just don't collect them. So I, I need to make some changes in the collection here. And I'm seeing a trend here that has to be, uh, that has to be looked into. So <laughs> there we go, Kraftwerk. Uh, Billy Joel Pressure. Um, I'm not a huge Billy Joel fan. Uh, there's a lot of his songs I don't like, but this is one I do like. Uh, pressure. Uh, you hear this. You hear this song a lot during NBA games when the game is on the line. They put somebody on the free throw line, and then you start hearing the keyboard riff. Pressure. <laughs> so, I hear this song used a lot during NBA games. So, pretty cool to have that. And well, and with Wang Chung, they're not a favorite amongst the VC, but I dig them. <laughs> the song is called Hypnotize Me love this song it's one of my favorite from them and uh, i don't remember what label this is on eh, it's on geffen so uh, a really cool song from wang chung like i said one of my favorites of theirs really cool and that was my vinyl haul my return to digging which was was sweet for a while it lasted and then the real world caught up <laughs> to me and reminded me that we are in very very crazy insane times um it is it is horrible what's going on out there but it's necessary uh i don't get political on my channel but i understand why these people are protesting and they should protest because what's what ha what's been happening you know black folks versus the police that's just you know everybody has human rights and uh, if I was hunted down like that repeatedly by the police, I would react exactly the way they're reacting. <laughs> so I don't blame them. Um, I, just, <laughs> I just wish there wasn't so much looting and destruction of property involved. Um, but it is what it is, right, folks? Anyway, that's going to do it for here. Um, it still feels good to be back into vinyl digging, so uh, hopefully I won't let 
uh, the state of the country get me down. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing good out there. See you at the next video.